The global auto industry is shifting gears again with hybrid vehicles gaining momentum as the popularity of EVs begin to slow. According to S&P Global Mobility, new vehicle registration data show that year-on-year -year EV growth through the first nine months of 2024 plummeted 80% as compared to the same period in 2023. Another report from ENY shows that while globally those looking to buy an EV rose from 55% in 2023, it was up to 58% in 2024. Demand is leveling off, having increased from 30% to 55% between the period of 2020 and 23. A series of concerns are holding prospective buyers back with lack of charging infrastructure topping the list. Several automakers, including Stellantis, Toyota, Volvo and Volkswagen have scaled back their electrification targets. Sales of hybrid electric vehicles seen more as affordable compromise between the all combustion as well as the all electric that have meanwhile increased. So the trend is gaining traction in the world's largest auto market, China. Hybrid cars accounted for almost half of new EV sales last year, with several producers revving up development and production to meet growing demand. Well, for more on that, let's turn back to Ronan Lim, who is uh, right next to me now. Uh, Ronan, first of all, explain the pivot uh, that you, we have been seeing from Asia's top car makers. Right. So this is a global rethink. It's mm. not exactly an abandoning of EVs, but rather more of the adjusting of the timelines and the strategy. Um, as you know, EV growth has been uh, plateauing. You know, yeah. uh, those that want EV cars already have them. Therefore, the next wave are uh, price-conscious buyers. That's one thing. And then, of course, there's still the infrastructure uh, charging gaps. Mm -hmm. There's still the range yeah. anxieties caused by EV cars. And not to mention, EVs are still expensive to buy as well as to make uh, mm. EV batteries, if you didn't know, actually account for 30 to 40 percent of the selling price of the car. So the batteries are what you actually buy. Uh, and on top of which, it also makes it cheaper for automakers to actually make uh, hybrids as opposed to EV. So those are some of the factors. Yeah, that, that explains a lot. Uh, Toyota, uh, for example, never really jumped all in on EVs like uh, some of the others. What was the thinking behind that strategy? Right. So Toyota started the hybrid trend with their Prius model. Uh, so they've actually doubled down mm -hmm. on hybrids, uh, so much so that their target now is by 2030, all of their core models will be hybrids. Yeah. So they're going to forego uh, petrol vehicles altogether in many major markets. In fact, we had uh, Toyota's chairman, Akio Toyoda. He actually said that uh, the silent majority uh, of the automakers uh, isn't truly convinced mm. that uh, uh, the world is still ready to go full electric. So they have what is known as a, a multi-pathway strategy. So they're building EVs, they're building hybrids, they're building uh, plug-in hybrids, they're even building hydrogen cars for the future. So, And that's worked out pretty well for them because uh, 2024, mm. last year alone, uh, Toyota did sell, uh, it saw its hybrid sales growth some 60% over yeah. the previous year. So it, it's working out for them. Interesting. Um, well, one car maker does not a trend make. So let's talk about Honda. They changing course too? What are they indicating? Yes, uh, Honda a couple of days back uh, had a big announcement. Uh, so yes, uh, they had ambitious uh, EV plans. Uh, Japan's number two car maker even teamed up with General Motors yeah. in the US uh, for EV infrastructure there. But uh, news flow out of that was that a couple of days back, they decided no, global sales for Honda for EVs uh, we're going to slash that from 30% mm. to 20%. What was more striking that the fact that the EV investments, they're going to be slashing that by a third, and they're going to take that money and put it into hybrids instead. The reasons for that, well, it's very simple, because there is demand for hybrids, and it is cheaper for them to make hybrids. So that's where the profitability is. So that, that's what they're going to do. All right, so... Japan car makers sorted, but how unique is their approach? I mean, do we see other uh, car makers, leading car makers in Asia following suit like South Korea? Yes, uh, South Korean automakers, uh, Hyundai and Kia, they've also had success with EV models, uh, Hyundai, especially with their Ionic 5 that was a bestseller for them. So they are also seeing that demand growing, especially in markets like mm. the US, South Korea and emerging Asian markets. So they are out 
are also uh, slowly pivoting towards hybrids now as part of their diversification portfolio. Okay, last question. Um, if I'm holding stocks, <laughs> shares in Toyota, Hyundai, whatever it is, uh, am I still holding on to them? And what's the future like? Well, analysts are actually quite bullish about mm. stocks like uh, Toyota or even Hyundai. Uh, Toyota's focus on hybrids, for example. Uh, Toyota just reported 2% year-on-year Q4 increase in their operating profits. Yeah. And that's thanks just because they sold more hybrids than anybody else. Uh, JP Morgan is predicting a 26% on-year rise mm. uh, in sales growth for hybrids for Toyota for fiscal year 2024-25. So uh, the company is in a very strong position uh, for hybrids. Uh, Hyundai uh, also recorded uh, record quarterly profit recently, uh, and analysts are saying that um, Hyundai stock credit rating should be high because uh, it's currently undervalued. It has strong earnings per share, and it also makes for an attractive investment. All right, I'm hearing you and all that. Thank you so much, Roland Lim.